It is National Voter Registration Day, six weeks before we're set to pick a president in the middle of a pandemic. A lot of unknowns about this extraordinary election, and we're hoping to answer your what-ifs, your how-do-yous, and your where-can-ys. We're asking your questions of Idaho's Secretary of State and County Clerks from Ada and Twin Falls to get you the information you need to make sure you know where, when, and how to cast your ballot for 2020. All right, here we are a little more than a month away, 42 days until the November general election. We do this every four years, but as you know, this one is a little different. Sure, the stakes may seem a little higher, our sensibilities a little more heightened, the weight a little heavier, but we're also dealing with how to do this during a pandemic. Soon, uh, so now on this eighth National Voter Registration Day, a day to engage all Americans with the voting process, we are hoping to get you involved, make you a little less uncomfortable with what to expect on and around November 3rd. And this may not shock you, but you know every year millions and millions of Americans simply don't vote. Sometimes it's based on basically not knowing how to register or even cast their vote. Well, over the last several weeks and months, we have seen a lot of your questions. And today we're going to try to answer as many as we can all in one place. Joining us today from several different places, a panel of Idaho election experts. Secretary of State Lawrence Denny, Twin Falls County Clerk Christina Glasscock and Ada County Clerk Phil McGrain. And our goal here is to ensure Idahoans know to vote, no matter what side of the aisle you may be standing on. So thank you all for joining us here this afternoon. Viewers, feel free to keep sending us your questions. You can text them to us. The number is on the bottom of your screen right now, 208-321-5614. We may get to a few of them here right off the top. But we have about two dozen questions on the docket, so let's get right to it. Our first one is for Twin Falls County Clerk Christina Glasscock. And Ben writes, I'm a new voter. Where do I register to vote for the first time? It's a great question, Ben. Um, today, National Voter Registration Day, we're trying to get over a million uh, registered voters in Idaho. Um, it's really a simple process. Um, we have uh, pre-registration up until October 9th. If you miss that registration cutoff, Idaho has election day registration where you can register and vote um, at early voting um, locations or at your polling place. The easiest thing to do is go to idahovotes.gov and you can register online if you have a valid Idaho driver's license or Idaho ID card. If you don't, you can print out a registration form and fill it out and mail it to your uh, county clerk or drop it by your county clerk's office and we will get you registered. Okay, Christina, you said the goal is try to get a million Idahoans registered today, but realistically, how many Idahoans actually do vote? Well, it depends on the election. You know, sure. we have four election dates a year and uh, in a presidential election, we'll be in the high 70s. Uh, usually in 2016, we were at 76% statewide on the presidential general election. That's pretty impressive. All right, so we'll see how that plays out here coming up in the next 40 days or so. So our second question for Idaho Secretary of State Lawrence Denny, two kind of related questions here. First part of that, what if someone is registered to vote in two states? Do you have to be removed from the registry in one state before you can vote in the new one? Well, thank you for that question. No, you do not have to be removed. Uh, you just have to register. And I would advise any voter that is registered in two states to make sure you only vote in one. Uh, if, if you vote in two, it would be considered fraud and, and you could be in legal jeopardy if you voted in two, but you only have to be a resident in the state of Idaho for 20 days in the state and 20 day, or 30 days in the state and 30 in the county to register to vote in Idaho. Okay, so it is possible. I mean, you wanna avoid that. You mentioned the felony. It's a pretty stiff fine if you send an absentee ballot to your old state and then try to vote in person here in Idaho. That could be a big problem for you. And I know we mentioned this already, but let's hit this again so people know this. The deadline to register to vote in Idaho is when? Uh, the the uh, deadline is October 9th, and then it is shut off. You can uh, do early voting starts about that time and you can register at the polls at that time uh, and vote in person uh, early voting. Okay, so it's just easier to get it out of the way, go online and get it done before October 9th. So it's one less step in the process if you're heading out to the polls coming up on November 3rd. All right, thank you very much. This one for Ada County Clerk Phil McGrain. We're gonna go for you or go to you for this one. Lori asks this, if you already submitted an absentee request this year, got one for the recent school district election, 
Will you automatically get one for November's election? Good question. Uh, in this instance, most likely. We had the all-male May primary where every voter uh, requested an absentee ballot who participated in that election. And most voters went in and checked the box requesting a ballot for the August and November elections. Uh, overwhelmingly, the people who got ballots in August were because they had checked that box. So most likely, they had also checked the box for November. However, if there's any doubt, any voter can go check the status of their absentee request on IdahoVotes.gov. If they check their voter records uh, on that page, they can see if they have a request in the queue. And if they don't, they can make that request on the website while they're there. And as already has been discussed, it's a great opportunity to go online and update your registration as well. It'll really make voting easier on Election Day or through the mail if you update your registration now, which is why we're really trying to draw attention to National Voter Registration Day. Excellent. Okay, you see yeah. Joe Paris up there. Joe, why don't you go ahead and take a couple of these questions? Yeah, well, I know a big question people want to know about is when are we actually going to get the ballot? Let's go to Sherry. Sherry actually asked us over on the 208 Facebook page. She writes to us saying, how do I get my ballot to vote? Do I have to apply for it or I just get it in the mail? She tells us she's very confused. What do we know here about getting the ballots? You know, this year has been a challenge with the pandemic and everything going on because we had the different rules in May. Really, for the November election, all of the rules are the same as they traditionally have been. If you want to have your ballot mailed to you, you do need to submit an absentee ballot request to get that mailed to you. Also, early voting will be available as well as in-person voting on Election Day. So all regular methods are available. Um, but if you do want to have the ballot mailed to you, we're not going to automatically do it here in Idaho. You do need to actually take the step. Go to IdahoVotes.gov and submit that request today. Uh, the majority of voters have submitted those requests already, uh, but all methods of voting will be avail available for this election. And I know we really can't hit these important dates enough. I want to throw this uh, graphic back on screen. Phil, what are some big dates we need to know? And then again, this pre-register date, explain that to me. You know, one of the things that will really help us as well as help voters on Election Day is if people update their registrations now. It's not just new people moving into the area who should register to vote, although we really want them to register as well. But if you've moved in the past four years or anything's changed like your name, go and update your records today. It will make it so much smoother and easier for you as well as other voters if you update those. The deadline is October 9th, as the secretary mentioned, to get those pre-registrations in. Once that hits, it'll no longer be possible to request an absentee ballot, for example. You'll have to go to the polls or to early voting to same-day register. Um, early voting will start on October 13th, which is one of those other key dates. So, uh, you know, the election is already underway, and we'll see lots more voting continuing as we lead into that November 3rd election day. Are you going to hear this know, date? Brian, let's head back to you. Yeah, we're going to hear this date thrown out there a lot during these next uh, 30 minutes or so, this October 9th deadline. So keep that in mind, IdahoVotes.gov. That's the website you need to go to. Let's go over to Christina Glasscock again. This person texting in asking about when people actually get their ballots, their mail-in or absentee ballots. We requested our mail-in ballots through the SOS, the Secretary of State website, on August 26th and have not received them. What is the ETA? Christina, what does this timeline look like over the next several weeks? Well, um, we have a lot of ballots that need to be mailed out, and we started mailing ballots on Friday, um, September 18th, to our uh, overseas military UACAVA voters. And due to the special legislative session, we were granted an extra 15 days to try and help us get out all these ballots that we have requests for. So by October 5th is the day we have to have all anything that's been requested. Um, we have to have mailed out by then. So hang tight. We've had people coming in for weeks wanting to know where their ballot is, but uh, we, we're, we're in the process right now of mailing them out. Um, in 2016, in Twin Falls County, we only mailed out a little over 2,000. And today we have over 11,000 requests already. So it's huge. I can't imagine uh, some of the larger counties, the volume. Uh, but we have statutory deadlines to get these ballots out to the voters. So uh, uh, be watching your mail. It'll um, hopefully be arriving if you've got a request in by um, October 5th. And any new requests that are coming in, please give us a couple weeks to get those processed. Okay, I got a couple follow-up questions, both for you, Phil McGrain, and Secretary of State, uh, Denny. Uh, is uh, Twin Falls, Christina mentioned she's already started mailing those out. Has that happened already in Ada County or other counties? Have they started mailing out those absentee ballots yet? 
Yeah, Brian. So there was a federal deadline that Christina mentioned. So Friday, all the military members and overseas citizens uh, had their ballots mailed. That gives opportunity for the ballot to get to Afghanistan and back, for example. Um, now it's kind of we're underway and clerks throughout the state. It'll vary a little bit, as Christina mentioned. But October 5th really is when voters should anticipate to receive their ballots. Uh, I, I echo Christina in terms of patience. We're still early in terms of this election cycle. Normally, there isn't quite this heightened attention. Mm -hmm. um, um, in Ada County, we plan to mail the ballots outright on September 30th with hopes that they'll hit uh, mailboxes on October 3rd and October 5th. So if you haven't received your ballot, you shouldn't have received it yet. We're mailing well over 100,000 in that first mailing. So it is a massive undertaking like Christina mentioned. And there's so much attention right now that it, patience goes a long way as we try to get those out. But we'll have ample time for voters to get their ballots and get them back to us in time. Speaking of patients, Secretary Denny, you mentioned this morning you guys have had a lot of requests for absentee ballots. How many requests have you had so far and how does that rank when it comes to previous elections? Uh, well, so far we've had uh, 333,000 requests statewide and that is probably about three times the normal rate. Uh, I would expect that uh, we're going to see at least 50 percent vote absentee in this election and and probably higher than that. That's pretty amazing. All right, Joe. Well, a big uh, question, of course, when people go to vote is what's on the ballot? What do I need to know about these people? And that actually, that prompted another question for you, Secretary Denny, this person writing to us wanting information for voters. He asks, Idaho received federal funding for elections. Why doesn't the Secretary of State's office put out voter guides for Idaho of the candidates running in their brief bios with their policy beliefs and agenda? Has this is something like this been considered before? Well, thank you for that question. Okay. Uh, thank you. I'm gonna answer that in two parts. First is the voter's guide. And yes, we tried to, to do an online voter's guide a couple of couple of years ago or a couple cycles ago, and we learned a great deal from doing that. Uh, number one, that we learned we didn't have the time resources that we needed to do it as well as it should have been done. Uh, it kind of got set to the side, and but it is something that we are looking at. I think, uh, I think that's a very good uh, public service to have something online where you can look at a picture, look at a short bio and, and a few few words from the candidates saying what they stand for. Uh, the second part of the question is the federal uh, money. And uh, I would have to say that we did receive two different federal grants this year, both of them over $3 million. Uh, the first one was earmarked for uh, election infrastructure and security. And the second one was to, to cover the added expenses of the COVID uh, neither one of those were, could have been used, I don't think, for a voter's guide, even if we had been ready to do it. So uh, we, do, we do have that money. We are sharing it with the counties, and, and uh, especially the infrastructure, I think, is going to be improved over the next year or so. So something to keep our eyes out for the future. Uh, of course, with every election, a big conversation is about election security and ballot security. And we saw a lot of questions come in really since May about this. And again, you'll see the number on the bottom of your screen. You can text in and ask your questions. We'll take some live here during this uh, next half hour. But that leads us to this next question here. This person wrote in on Zip Whip to us saying, it's been many years since we registered to vote. Is there some method to verify our signatures to make sure that they match our current signatures in order to ensure that our mail-in ballots don't get rejected? Also, is there any way to ensure our mail-in vote has been registered or counted? Phil, I know I've asked you about this for months. Election security, ballot security, what's the word? Yeah, that's a great question. We've actually seen this come in quite a bit recently because so many people are participating in absentee ballots that never have before. This is really the first year that many voters have actually used the absentee process. It is true, we check every single signature on all of the absentee ballots that are returned into each of our offices throughout the state. This is one of the ways that we ensure that it is the person voting who says they're voting. Um, the mail is obviously different. One of the things I wanna reassure people though is your signature, it doesn't have to be a perfect match. So for example, if John Doe submits his ballot and sometimes he signs his name, Jonathan Doe, other times John Doe, sometimes J Doe, um, all of those would still be valid signatures. 
we're not looking for a, an exact match of someone's signature. So we've had voters ask, you know, can I see a copy so I know exactly how to sign? You don't need to be that exacting. We receive training in terms of looking at the signatures to look for things like loops, slants, the direction of the signature. And I know that most voters might doubt me on this, but people's signatures are amazingly consistent. I know everyone says, oh, my signature changes every time. When you compare it against hundreds of thousands of other signatures, I can assure you it's more consistent than you realize. Um, we do we compare them to voter registration cards and driver's license records uh, to be able to validate. It's one of the security measures. And just to give a sense of the signature thing for this upcoming election, in the May election in Ada County, uh, we rejected 0.6% of signatures. So overwhelmingly, most voters, their ballots went through just fine. Of those 0.6, overwhelmingly, three quarters of the signatures that were rejected were because the voter forgot to sign their ballot. Hmm. It wasn't because the signature didn't match. It was because they forgot to sign it. Uh, as Christina will emphasize, both of us, we try to reach out to voters in those instances to get them to get, sign their ballot so we can still count that vote. It's one of the reasons I'll encourage if you do get an absentee ballot, get it in sooner. It gives that opportunity for us to communicate with you and address any issues that might come up. Uh, similarly, we're always looking out for voter fraud. I know whether any of the offices throughout the state. And so if we see a mismatch, that initiates us looking into to make sure that we can protect the integrity of the vote for this election. Well, there, that was actually perfect, Phil. You knocked out our next question as well from Hans. He was asking about uh, his ballot and his ballot signature, about sometimes he has his full name, sometimes he has just his initial. So, Hans, thank you so much for your question. And uh, as Phil mentioned, that's something they're on top of there. And again, please text to the number at the bottom of your screen. Ask us some of your questions. But, Brian, we'll go back to you for the next one. Yeah, and just a reminder, text those questions into the number on your screen. Do not call that number. Just send them in by text. And we'll get them up uh, on the show as we best we can. Let's do one right now. Actually, we got one in just in the last five minutes. This one from Ruth Mayer. When I voted last, I voted unaffiliated. Are we still listed as unaffiliated? And does that decide what ballot we get? If so, then my husband and I would like to be registered as a Democrat. We'll get to that later. But whoever wants to answer that question, I assume it's as simple as going to IdahoVotes.gov and kind of fixing your registration. Is that correct? Yeah, Brian, I'll, I'll jump on that. Updating your registration. If you want to change your party affiliation, this is an opportunity to do that. However, I want to reassure, reassure Ruth, as well as any other uh, viewers right now, you don't need to change your party affiliation for this election. Everyone's going to get the same ballot. It's uh, based on where you live. It is a general election. So in a primary, that party affiliation matters. But for this upcoming election, it does not matter. Everyone will get the opportunity to vote on whatever candidate they choose, and they don't have to be loyal to any particular party for this election. So being unaffiliated is not a problem. Okay, so going back to this validating uh, ballots and signatures, there's no way you can check IDs. This one coming in, uh, sent in from, I believe, let's see, we've got... Uh, yeah, this one coming in from Lori. That's what, okay, so there's no way to check IDs if you vote by mail, which tells me that anyone, she says, can vote and you don't know who they are. Is this a fair point by Christina? Well, um, we, you have to be registered to vote, first of all, to get an absentee ballot. And with your voter registration, we have your signature on file. So when it comes time for you to request an absentee ballot, we compare your signature on that request for an absentee ballot to your signature on your voter registration card before we'll ever send you a ballot. And then once you've voted your ballot and returned it, there's a place on the envelope that you're signing on the outside of the envelope and we're comparing that signature to your voter registration. So there's a lot of checks and balances in place uh, to prevent uh, voter fraud. Okay, and we have a lot of questions too about the Postal Service and kind of people using the mail service to send in their ballots and how the Postal Service handles these. Sue is, uh, wrote to us and asked, is this true? Postal worker says, if you return your ballot with two first class stamps on it instead of the reply free post is provided, the U.S. Postal Service must deliver your ballot as first class because you paid first class for it. It cannot be put into a bulk mail category. Phil McGrain, I know we've talked about this with you a couple of times. Extra stamps, do we need them? Good idea? No, save yourself the stamps and save yourself the postage. Um, in Idaho, we already use first class postage for all ballots going to voters and coming back. Uh, so we're already receiving that first class treatment here. I know people may hear on the national news, and I think that's one of the unique things about this election. There's a big national conversation. Some states handle things different. 
Uh, let's just remember we're here in Idaho and the way we handle things are, is different than many other states. And so we're already using that first class postage. There's no need. Uh, we've been working closely with the postmaster here locally and working with the Postal Service. We have a close relationship and both they and we want to reassure voters here locally uh, that we've got things under control and we believe that it will go smoothly here in Idaho. I can't speak for other parts of the country, uh, but certainly here we've been working closely leading up to this election to make sure everything goes smoothly and the postage is already first class, so it's not going to amp up the status of your ballot. Okay, so jumping off that then, how quickly should you send your ballot back after you get it? You know, uh, one of the things I think the secretaries emphasize this on a number of forums there, the post service is encouraging once you have your ballot, uh, two weeks before the election is the best time to mail it in to ensure there's no doubt that it's going to get there. I think a really important part is you can go to IdahoVotes.gov and under again, checking your voter status and your records, you can see that we've received your ballot. Um, and it'll give you a status update to make sure, yes, my ballot is going to get counted. So it's one of those tools a voter can double check to make sure we got it. Um, also, we're taking additional steps. I know both uh, our office as well as Christina in terms of drop boxes and other means. If anyone gets close to Election Day, uh, you'll hear us encouraging people to bring them into the county offices in order to return those ballots. But there should be ample time, especially for those voters who've already requested their absentee ballot to get to them and get it back in time for this election. Okay, so I know we've touched on this a little bit and we've heard more about this in this election year than probably any others, but we're going to go back to this voter fraud question. Dick asked this and Christine, I'm going to ask this question of you. If someone in Idaho requests an absentee ballot, sends it in, then goes and votes in person, what's to prevent them from counting both of those ballots? What would happen in that situation? Well, in our poll books, we're able to indicate that that voter has already re uh, received a ballot and returned a ballot. So if that voter shows up at their polling place on election day, the poll workers will see that that voter has already uh, received a ballot and will not let them vote and tell them, thanks for stopping by. It's still the same election that you voted on your mail ballot. It's not a different one. Have a nice day. But we do get that where people are think it might be a different election, so they'll stop by their polling place. But um, our poll workers are great. Uh, we, we give them the tools and resources to know if someone has already returned an absentee ballot. Well, Secretary Denny, on that one, I mean, we talked about this also a little bit, but how quickly do these, these registrations or this, this tally, the, the tracking, how quickly does it update? For the, uh, for the request or for the, the, that the ballots are? For, uh, for like the absentee ballots, if I turn one in, how quickly will then it be, t will it tell the poll workers, so if I do go try to uh, or vote in person, it will notify them that I already have voted? Well, it's not instantaneous, but I would say that it would be within a matter of, of uh, probably an hour or less. Okay. Before it's updated. Uh, very close to instantaneous. Okay. Brian, if I might add. Yeah. Uh, I, th I think in here it's important, and Christina kind of alluded to this, all of our systems are networked together. So when someone registers to vote, for example, in Ada County, we're communicating in real time between Twin Falls County and Ada County. Also, even with, as you'll see at the polls, uh, through most of uh, much of the state, electronic poll books being used this election, they're communicating in real time with each other as well. So if a voter votes at one precinct and tries to go register at another precinct, that precinct already knows that the person has registered and voted. Um, and so we're maintaining that information for both the poll books at the polls, as well as with the absentee process. And, and it's worth noting, if for some reason someone figures out a path where they are able to get two ballots and attempt to vote those both of those ballots, we can easily detect that on the back end. And we're quick to work with our local sheriff's offices and prosecutors uh, to prevent any voter fraud and to pursue it. I mean, there's certainly been some examples in the past while it's rare, it's because we have safeguards in place to catch and prevent those instances. Well, a big conversation after the all vote by mail primary in May is what was it going to look like in November? And now here we are only, I guess, less than two months away. And that prompts a very simple question here during our segment. Are the polls open in November? Secretary Dan has been for months, but Idahoans want to know, is it going to be county by county or are all Idaho polls open? Well, thank you for that question. I think that's important. And yes, there is going to be an in-person polling location open in every uh, in every county. And, and uh, it may not be, there may be some co-location co of precincts. However, you will be able to 
to vote in person uh, on election day if that is your choice. And uh, on that same topic, Doug writes to us wanting to know about the COVID concerns. He says, curious about voting booths and the ability to keep them sanitary during the coronavirus. Who will be responsible for sanitizing each booth and pen once the voter leaves the booth? Christina, what are clerks working on with the COVID security, the, the COVID safety at the polls? We want to make sure that our poll workers are safe and our voters are safe. We will have masks available, we'll have hand sanitizer, we'll have wipes. We're requiring our poll workers to wear a mask and we're requesting our voters if they would please wear a mask. And then um, we are also uh, going to give them their own marking device so that they were not sharing marking devices to mark the ballot. So they can take a marking device um, sign in, uh, vote their ballot, and take that uh, marking device with them when they leave. And our poll workers will be sanitizing uh, the voting booths throughout the day, just trying to keep everyone safe. Um, you know, if you don't, if you if you don't feel well that day, or if you are immune compromised, please vote um, by ab- by absentee, um, just to keep you safe and our poll workers safe. So we've established there will be some in-person voting and a big part of that is the poll workers, the volunteers that essentially make that happen along with the clerk's office. That prompts a question from Mike. He wants to know, I volunteered as a poll worker in Ada County. When will I find out if I will be a poll worker? Thank you very much. Phil, what do poll workers need to know? First off, thank you, Mike, for being willing to step up and serve as a poll worker. I think uh, we wouldn't be able to do this without the poll workers serving in each of our communities. we actively have people reaching out to our poll workers. I know for both Christina and I, we were concerned about having enough poll workers and we've reached out for help. Uh, I can report that we've been overwhelmed by the response. We've had people reaching out to us all over and had way more responses than we have positions for the poll workers, but we're actively working right now to get everyone set up and scheduled for training for this upcoming election. Um, it's been unique. Uh, and I think one of the aspects is having so many people. So. We're trying to reach out now just to confirm that we have received people's applications and are working on placing them, hopefully at a polling location near their home where they can serve in their local community as we lead up to the election. Awesome. You just answered the question that G. Arnold sent in during the show here. So, yeah, that's that's good to know. Let's go back to the absentee ballot process. I'm going to ask you, uh, Christina, Kathy writes, when are absentee ballots counted? Are they counted before the election? And due to time constraints, if they are counted on Election Day, do they all get counted in time? That's a great question. And what something that prompted uh, the special legislative session um, that was recently held, uh, our Governor Little and our um, legislators came together and were able to allow us to start opening and scanning the ballots a week before the election due to the volume. However, we will not be um, tabulating those and releasing results until election night. So um, that will afford us the opportunity to have results for you on election night. Okay, so that's all right. That explains that process. But then that goes into this authentic authenticity question we get a lot of. I'm going to ask you of this, uh, Secretary Denny, a person wants to know about that because we question everything nowadays. But how can we trust the results that we're getting on election day or thereabouts? How will we know if those are going to be real? Well, you know, I would say, uh, uh, Probably the best thing is, is those are still unofficial results on election night. However, uh, uh, you know, and, and there's always a concern that somebody might hack in and change numbers, but you can be assured that, that we do have the paper trail. We have every ballot, every paper ballot, and we can make sure that those numbers are correct uh, before we do the, or by the time we do the canvas and, which is a couple of, uh, or a week or so later. So uh, yes, uh, the numbers that you're seeing on the screen may be off a little bit. There may, you may see something that comes in and, and we change it later, but we do have the, the tracking ability to track those paper ballots. And if we need to, to audit that uh, trail and to, to make sure that the numbers are correct by the time we do the canvas of the vote. Okay, I I assume the same can be said of Ada County, Phil. I mean, the same question that we get a lot of this. I mean, election night results, we can hope for them. Should we expect them in Ada County? 
Yeah, I think a couple of points there. You know, one, make sure you're going to trusted sources. So visit IdahoVotes.gov, the Secretary of State's office, AdaCountyElections.com. Make sure the source for your results is uh, one of the official sources. That'll be ensure you are getting the accurate information and up to date. Um, we will be, as Christina mentioned, uh, uh, scanning the ballots in advance for the absentees so that we don't have the delays. I expect around the country we will see some significant delays in states that didn't adjust their rules like Idaho did. I think we're very appreciative of Governor Little and the legislature for helping us ensure that we'll have results. I expect Wednesday morning is when everyone could look and see the results, both for the presidential race here locally, but all the other local races. Um, it's going to take us through the evening. I know, Brian, you and I have done this on multiple presidential elections where we've stayed up late and I've been out there with Joe. This is gonna be another one of those. I think one of the biggest challenges Christine and I will have that night is we're going to get a flood of absentee ballots coming back on election day, whether that's through the drop boxes or picking them up at the postal service at 8 p.m. when the polls close. And so and we still have to validate all those signatures, open them up, flatten them out, scan them. So we'll have a crew actually working through the entire evening just to get those results out to the public. Um, I really do think it'll feel like many of our past presidential elections here because we made some key adjustments to make sure the voters get those results and that we have them timely. Bottom line is for election workers and for reporters and journalists like us, pack a snack. It's going to be a long night. <laughs> it will be a long night. So plan on ordering some pizza that night there at the studio. Exactly. You know, Phil, I wanted to follow up on uh, something you talked about with all those mail-in ballots coming in. A national conversation right now is that some states are extending. So if your mail-in ballot gets there within three days of election day, it'll still count. Does the state of Idaho have anything like that? No, that's a great question, Joe. We are not changing any of those deadlines. Uh, we did do that a little bit in the May election and it, it caused other issues uh, kind of unanticipated. And so uh, the deadline to return your absentee ballot is 8 p.m. when the polls close on election day. So once you get it, make sure you plan ahead and make time. If for some reason something comes up or even you misplace your ballot and you can't find it, um, as long as you haven't actually voted it and returned it, you can go to one of the polling locations and still vote in person that day. We want to make sure everyone has the opportunity to vote. So if something comes up, reach out to your clerk's office or plan to go to your polls. You will not be excluded just because you requested an absentee ballot. You are still allowed to show up to the polls and vote. Just make sure for everybody, and I think the secretary mentioned this earlier, you only get one vote. So only vote once. Uh, we'd rather not be following up with you after this election. Well, with this election specifically, there's a lot of attention on the methods of voting. I know a lot of people, they were wanting the polls to be open in November, but they did request an absentee ballot. And this actually, next question coming in on Zip Whip. Um, if I requested an absentee ballot, but I decided I actually want to go vote at the polls, can I do that? Christina, if you request an absentee ballot, are you locked into sending that back in or could you toss it and go to the polls? Uh, we've had a lot of people coming in our office because in May they didn't know what November was going to be like and if we'd have polling places open and wanting us to avoid the request, which we're able to do. If you have not returned your absentee ballot and you want to vote at your polling place and we show you have not returned your ballot, we can void that absentee ballot and let you vote at your polling place on election day. However, <laughs> we've gone to a lot of work to get you that absentee ballot. So we would, um, you know, if you have an opportunity to devote it and get it back uh, by 8 p.m. on election day, we would really appreciate that uh, just because it does tend to slow things down when you show up at your polling place and they show you've got uh, an absentee ballot out there that hasn't been returned. So. Well, yeah, that's right. Well, the we'll ballots, they didn't mail themselves out. A lot yeah. of work went into a lot of clerk's offices. <laughs> and again, if you send your uh, ballot in through the mail, you don't have to worry about COVID concerns at the polls. But that leads right to our next question. Uh, we got a question from Bill. He says, what if someone is sick on Election Day and they can't go to vote? Phil, I'm going to add on to the question. What if someone's sick on Election Day, they can't go vote and they don't have an absentee ballot available to them? Do they simply lose their vote? No, um, we're making space, so a couple of different things. We always have in place where we coordinate with the hospitals for anyone who is hospitalized uh, leading up to election day to be able to ensure that they have the opportunity to vote. Um, and this year's unique. We have the pandemic, it's impacting so many things as the earlier questions about what are we doing to keep things clean and safe at the polls indicates. One, if, if you are immune compromised, Christina mentioned this, 
absentee election voting is going to be the safest form to vote. Um, we think we are going to make sure everything's safe, and we've been working closely with Central District Health to do that. Um, but also for those, if someone tests positive, let's say the day before the election, and they were planning to vote at the polls, they'll still be able to vote. We are partnering with Central District Health in this instance as well to provide a polling location specifically for people who are positive with uh, coronavirus. It's something that will be focused just on those individuals to make sure this doesn't impede their ability to vote. Um, we're always wanting to work with voters and ensure everyone does have the opportunity to vote in this election. I think that's something we want to emph emphasize to everybody is we really are committed to making sure you do have that opportunity to vote. And it's one of the reasons we want to encourage everyone to register today for National Voter Registration Day. And of course, uh, if you don't want to go to the polls, you don't want to send your ballot through the mail, some viewers expressed to us that they don't trust the mail system at this point, but they want to vote by absentee. It leads to a question from Osmani. She says, uh, are there going to be secure drop boxes in Ada County for people to go and drop their ballots in those boxes? Uh, Phil, I know you and I had talked about this recently. Is that program maybe going to be expanded? Yes, it is, Joe. Um, we've heard those same uh, questions and concerns that you just mentioned, and we are adding additional drop boxes. Uh, we actually just picked up our additional drop boxes yesterday from having them print it, you know, our information put on them. Uh, we'll be placing them. I can say for sure for the election, we'll have a drop box at CUNA City Hall, at Eagle City Hall, at Meridian City Hall, and Boise City Hall, as well as our main elections office here on Benjamin and Boise. We're working to get some additional drop boxes for this election, uh, but we've run into lots of supply chain issues with so many things just because of the pandemic and everything going on. But uh, we have expanded those. And for some voters who are concerned about the security, we are also making sure that all of them are being monitored by cameras as well to ensure we know who's accessing the drop boxes and that we can prevent fraud in any form that it may come up for this election. But we're winding down here. I want to follow up real quickly with another popular question uh, about uh, early voting, in-person early voting. I'll, I'll field it to all three of you. What does it look like in your area specifically? Uh, Phil, we'll start with you, in-person voting in Ada County. Uh, in-person early voting will begin on October 13th. We'll have multiple locations, including Meridian City Hall, Benjamin, and uh, downtown Boise. Uh, we'll also have our mobile voting unit out there. And it's interesting, that's been one of our biggest rise is early voting. So it'll be interesting to see how many part people participate this year that way. Christina, same deal over in Twin Falls? Yep, October 13th through Friday, October 30th is our early voting. So we'll have, I'm sure we'll have lines. <laughs> And, you know, Secretary Denny, before we wrap this up, if there's one thing that you can tell to Idaho voters to have them be prepared to have a successful registration and vote before Election Day, what would you want Idahoans to know more than anything else? Well, I, I want them to know their options, you know, that there are many ways to register and there are many ways to vote. And uh, we want to make sure that everyone knows that and everyone has the opportunity to cast their ballot in this very important election. Uh, and right before you leave, I also want to make another plug. Uh, uh, I will be on the AARP town hall next week and next Tuesday with, with the governor, and we will field questions as well about uh, voting and, and try and answer their questions there as well. Secretary yeah, Dan, I got seriously. One Oh, go ahead, go ahead, go ahead, Brian. I was going to ask you one quick question before we let you go. Uh, when it comes to polling places, because of COVID, some places have been adjusted. When are people going to know where they go? If their polling place has changed, when can they uh, find that out? Well, those yeah, Brian, 30 days in advance, we'll have that information out. Okay. And uh, before we let everybody go, I just want to mention again, you can continue to text your questions into that line. Of course, we'll not get them in before one o'clock, but we'll continue to ask our election experts, our panel here uh, on the news at noon with us, as well as other county clerks. Of course, we couldn't include every county clerk here, uh, but we do appreciate the three of you and uh, Secretary Denny joining us. I know that there's a lot of questions leading up to Election Day. There's a lot of questions about making sure you get your ballot in. Uh, uh, Phil, anything else that you think we might have missed here? No, just thank you for having us all on here to share information. I thank you to the Secretary and Christina uh, for trying to answer as many questions. This election's unique and how much attention it has drawn. And I just encourage voters, don't forget, today is National Voter Registration Day. Visit IdahoVotes.gov for all your voting information, and you can register to vote and request your absentee ballot there on that site. 
Uh, the election is approaching quickly, so we appreciate the community support as we head forward. All That's right, do thank it for you us. so much for joining us. We'll see you on the news at four. <laughs> Good job. That oh, awesome. Was, uh, Sorry. Thank you guys very much. That you flew by. I don't know about for you guys. That flew by for me. Yeah, it, it was fast. Yeah, it, it did go 